x minus 1 factorial times negative x factorial equals pi over sine of pi times x? It doesn't make any sense. The factorial function is only defined for whole numbers. In this video, we will go in depth into how this identity works. Let me introduce you to the gamma function. Gamma of x is defined as x minus 1 factorial. It is an extension of the factorial function to the real plane and even the complex plane. But x factorial is a recursive function, which means it shouldn't be defined for the whole plane, just whole numbers. While that is true, the gamma function is simply a way of regularizing the function using patterns. Gamma of x is the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the power x minus 1 times e to the power negative t dt. This is what its graph looks like. Notice how the function at negative integers is undefined. That is because of the recursive property of the factorial function. This ultimately means that the identity doesn't hold true for integer values of x. Let us try to find gamma of 3 using the integral and see if it evaluates to 2 factorial or simply 2. Calc 2 students will be able to see how it works. Beautiful, isn't it? If you want to know how it came into existence and go deeper into it, I'd recommend watching Bree the Math Guy's video and looking into its Wikipedia pages. Gamma of X also has this cool product formula. I will not discuss how it works because it would make things really hard to grasp. We will just use this formula to show that the identity is true. Okay. So gamma of x equals 1 over x times the infinite product from n equals 1 of 1 plus 1 over n to the power x over 1 plus x over n. We have the first part of the identity. For gamma of 1 minus x, we can use the recursive property of factorials and notice how gamma of 1 minus x is simply negative x times gamma of negative x. Replacing x by minus x in the product formula of gamma of x, we get gamma of 1 minus x equals negative x times negative 1 over x times the infinite product from n equals 1 of 1 plus 1 over n to the power negative x all over 1 minus x over n. The x's cancel out in the front and we get this. Now, Putting everything together, we have gamma of x times gamma of 1 minus x equals the infinite product from n equals 1 of 1 plus 1 over n to the power x all over 1 plus x over n times the infinite product from n equals 1 of 1 plus 1 over n to the power negative x all over 1 minus x over n. Notice how we can combine the infinite product into 1. Doing so, we get 1 plus 1 over n to the power x and 1 plus 1 over n to the power negative x being multiplied in the numerator. That'd be just 1 because it is a product of a number and it's reciprocal. In the denominator, we can see how it is of the form of minus b times a plus b, where a is equal to 1 and b is equal to x over n. So using the a squared minus b squared identity, we get the thing as 1 over x times the infinite product from n equals 1 of 1 over 1 minus x squared over n squared. Now, remember Euler's infinite product for sine x is all right if you don't know it. Remember how we can factor terms in a polynomial and write a function in terms of its roots. Like the roots of x squared plus 5x plus 6 are negative 2 and negative 3. We can use these to write the function as x plus 2 times x plus 3. Using this idea, let us try writing sine x using its roots. The roots of sine x are of the form n pi where n is an integer. So we can write sine x as x times x minus pi times x plus pi times x minus 2 pi and so on forever. But this couldn't be true because this product is clearly breaking the domain rules of sine x. Is there any other way of writing x minus n pi equals 0? Yes. Divide the whole equation by negative n pi. 
and you get 1 minus x over n pi equals 0. The left-hand side is the form of the factors we were looking for. So, sine x equals x times 1 minus x over pi times 1 minus x over negative pi, and so on forever. This actually works. Now, if you look closely, you can see that two consecutive factors in this order are the form of minus b times a plus b. So we can use the a squared minus b squared identity. Writing the infinite product using capital pi notation, you get this. This must have started looking somewhat like the thing we want to evaluate, but we aren't quite there yet. Plug pi times x into this equation, and you get pi times x times the infinite product from n equals 1 of 1 minus pi squared times x squared over pi squared times n squared. The pi's cancel out, and you get this. Now, just take the reciprocal of the equation and multiply both sides by pi. There. The right-hand side thing is exactly what we were looking for, and it is equal to pi over sine of pi times x. So, we just showed that gamma of x times gamma of 1 minus x is equal to pi over sine of pi times x. Wow! What an amazing result! Let us replace x with z because it works for complex numbers as well. We have finally shown how z minus 1 factorial times negative z factorial is actually equal to pi over sine of pi times z. Also, Remember the discontinuities of the gamma function at negative numbers. This means that this formula works for any value of z, except for when the real part of z is an integer. Brilliant, isn't it? <laughs>